All right, so my name is Michael Sinrusty. We're here at Providence Restaurant in Los Angeles, California. Well, I've been cooking professionally since I was, uh, I don't know, 17 years old. Um, I've been living here in Los Angeles for about 30 years, and we opened Providence about uh, 17 years ago. You know, we mainly cook fish here at the restaurant, um, you know, and that came about because I'm, I'm really a lifelong fisherman, and that, you know, that passion for fishing and the sea just kind of slowly evolved into a profession. My philosophy here um, really is to work uh, exclusively with wild seafood. Um, that is when it comes to fin fish. You know, dry aging is a, sort of a phenomenon that, um, you know, in recent years has gotten way much more important, especially in the world of seafood. Um, it's much more prevalent now than it ever was. And so I'm kind of, you know, a new adoptee to the practice. Um, but, you know, using, using the dry ager um, has you know, really kind of like opened my eyes to the possibilities um, that come with you know, dry aging uh, fin fish. Um, what I find um, dry aging reveals in most fish is um, you know, obviously fat and then secondly of course flavor. You know, um, I have a, a perfect example of this is uh, we have a fisherman that we work with up in Santa Barbara by the name of Eric Hodge that brought us some incredible ikijime halibut caught here in California. Uh, on his boat up in uh, Santa Barbara. Through the process of dry aging and the evaporation that occurs with the water leaving the flesh, it revealed this incredible amount of fat that I've, as I said, never seen before in California halibut. So I have to say like that was probably my, um, what really turned my head when it comes to dry aging and made me a true believer. Having dry, the dry ager has enabled us to take more fish in at one time. You know, I'll take as much as I can possibly hold at once, which oftentimes is 200 or 250 pounds. And we'll split it up between the couple of dry agers that we have and hang the fish for, you know, several days before we start using it. And once we do use it and we cook the fish on the grill, the quality and the flavor of the meat was just um, you know, head and shoulders above we'd, what we had experienced before we used the dry ager. Here we have hiramasa, we have saba, we had the swordfish. Um, so we have all sorts of species of fish up there um, that were just, you know, just kind of waiting for the right day or the right time to pull them and add them to the menu. Because now it's not just so much like we're trying to find just the absolute freshest product available and serve it right away. Now we're like trying to find the absolute freshest product available and trying to decide when is just the right time to serve it. And that again is just something that, you know, it wasn't, it, before it wasn't really part of our repertoire and I'm so happy that it is now.